Well, hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com. Today I want to show you how to make kind of artificial snails or a food that's kind of artificial shellfish for puffers. Um, if puffers don't get enough crunchy, shelly stuff in their diet, their teeth will get overgrown and then they won't be able to use their mouth properly. So it's important to keep them crunching away so that their beaks wear down because they grow continually and they need to be continuously worn down or you'll run into problems. So I want to show you uh, how I do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is this is rapashi right here. I'm just going to take uh, a tablespoon, put it in here. Then I'm going to add two tablespoons of water. So I'm just making rapashi. It's pretty simple. Um, normally when I make this for my fish, I do a 3 to 1 ratio to get a little more out of the powder. But um, I want this to be a pretty thick uh, batch for what I'm going to do. So I'm mixing this together. And then what I'm going to do once it's mixed together and starts to kind of solidify a bit, I'm going to put this in. This is oyster shell. So this is sold for chickens, for poultry, to help give them calcium and to give them grit in their throat uh, so that they can, in their gizzard, so they can chew up, you know, their food since they don't have teeth. So I'm going to put quite a bit of oyster shell in there. And what I'm left with is this mixture, which I'll come up close and show you in a second of rapashi with which is kind of like a hard gel type substance like gelatin kind of all right so here it is so we've got rapashi with a whole bunch of oyster shell mixed in it so the puffers are gonna as they eat the rapashi they're gonna chew on all this oyster shell and it will help wear down their teeth. So I, I do this because my water is super soft. So I have snails, but because my water is soft and sometimes acidic a little bit, they don't grow thick, really healthy shells like snails kept in calcium rich water do. There's just not enough calcium available to them. So I feed my puffer snails, but the shells are so brittle it doesn't really wear down their teeth much. Whereas these oyster shells are, you know, from the ocean and uh, they're nice and hard and, and full of calcium. And so they'll be strong enough to wear down the puffer's teeth. So I feed this to the puffers just like I do normal rapashi. Um, tear off a chunk, throw it in there and they'll just go pick at it and take off big mouthfuls and crunch through the shells as they do it. So let's go feed them and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so here's the puffer tank. In a second here, I'll drop in some of this rapashi with uh, shells in it. I call it artificial snails. <laughs> it's kind of what it is. Um, and as you can see, they jump right on it and start tearing through it. And as they're doing that, they'll clamp down on the shells and crunch through them and wear down their teeth, which is great for them. So this has been a nice way for me to keep puffers successfully and not have to trim their teeth because um, I don't have, again, snails that will do that. I have snails, but not with beefy enough shells to be effective at all. So this has been a solution and it works really well. The nice thing about oyster shell is it's very inexpensive. I bought a 40 pound bag of it for $13 and that's gonna last me for a freaking decade. So <laughs> it's very affordable. Uh, I bought mine at my local like ranch supply feed store where they sell food for chickens and stuff like that. Um, you can also buy it online without any problem. It's readily available. So it's an, an easy and expensive ingredient to find to uh, you know be able to help your puffers wear down their teeth now I do want to say that I don't think that rapashi community which is what I'm using is a complete diet for puffers this is not all that I feed them I feed them scuds I feed them frozen mysis shrimp I feed them frozen bloodworms 
I feed them uh, live snails, I feed them shrimp, all kinds of stuff. But, and I feed them a couple times a day. But one of those feedings each day is this, because I want to make sure that each day they have a chance to kind of file down their beaks or, or their teeth, whatever we want to call them. And uh, so we don't run into that issue of having to trim their, their teeth, which is not good for anybody. So please understand that this, might, this is probably not a complete diet. The good part about it, though, is it does have veggies and vitamins and minerals and stuff in there. So the kinds of uh, nutrients that might be lacking in frozen foods, frozen shrimps and things like that, I think that the rapashi can help make up for that because it's packed full of, of goodness. So it might not have the super high protein that these guys are used to with a lot of their food, but it, it does contribute a lot of vitamins and minerals that are missing from that. So as part of a diet, I think it's fantastic. As a complete diet, I do not think that it is adequate. So please keep that in mind. Keep feeding the uh, meaty live foods and frozen foods and things like that to your puffers. But I think this is a good supplement. Now to get them to eat this, it's a learning curve. It's, it, they aren't naturally going to go straight to rapashi if they're not used to it. The way I do it is I feed them, you know, the other stuff that they like. And every day I put in a chunk of rapashi. I put it in in the morning and I let it sit there for a couple hours. And I take it out before it starts, you know, breaking down. And after doing that for five to seven days or so, then the puffers will have gotten used to it and picked out it enough that they recognize it as food and start going to it immediately when it's dropped in the tank. So it, it, there is a little bit of training for it. You don't need to like fast the fish or starve the fish to get them to convert to rapashi, but you just need to get them familiar with it so that they eventually all recognize it as a food source. So that's the way I, I get them to kind of start eating on rapashi. It does take a few days. It's a bit of a process. And you do want to take out any uneaten food uh, before it kind of, you know, disintegrates or falls apart in the tank. But it, it can be done. And once they learn to eat it, they go right for it pretty readily. Anyway, I hope this has been useful for anyone that has uh, puffers and wants to keep their teeth trimmed down or add some vitamins and minerals to the diet that might be missing in other ways. So if you have questions or comments about this, please leave it down below and I will be happy, happy, happy to answer those and get a discussion going. Um, Rapache is easy to make. It's just powder and some hot water, boiling water mixed together and you're good to go. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, if you wouldn't mind subscribing or liking or sharing or hitting the notification bell, all that stuff is helpful and would be appreciated. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.